Just like a diamond is valued by its four C's, pearls have their own valuation system. Hi, I'm Veronica with WatchMojo.com, and Laura from Laura Lynn is showing us how pearls are graded and valued. How are pearls valued? Well, generally, there's five things to take into consideration when buying pearls. You have to consider the shape, you have to consider their size, their shine, their surface, and their shape. If we're shopping for pearls, is there any way to find out if they're not genuine? Definitely, there's a few uh, a few methods of knowing. One's pretty funny. I, I mean, it's you shouldn't do this in front of the the salesperson. But one way is to rub the pearl against your tooth, and if, if you feel this grindy kind of feeling, you know that it's real. But if it slips, then you know that it's fake. Other than that, you can rub the pearls together, and if they slide, you'll know that it's a, a synthetic pearl. And if you feel that sandy kind of feeling, you know that it's a genuine pearl. So right now, do you think you could take us for a closer look at each of the S's? Yes. Absolutely, we can start with the shape of the pearl if you'd like. So we'll begin with shape. Um, shape uh, plays a role in determining the price of pearls. Usually, the more perfectly round the pearl, the more expensive the pearl. Um, throughout history, pearls, round pearls were generally considered the most valuable and expensive because they were a symbol of the moon. But today, pearls, perfectly round pearls are still considered very valuable and expensive, but there are the not so perfectly round pearls which are considered just as valuable. So this would be an example of a round pearl. This is, as you can see, so symmetrical and it's considered the most valuable and the most expensive out of all the pearls. semi baroque are considered to be more irregular and more imperfect. Um, examples of that would be egg-shaped pearls, um, button-shaped pearls, pear-shaped pearls, and circular-shaped pearls. In this store, we often use the circular shaped pearls. I feel that they're beautiful and they add quite a pizzazz. As you can see here, all the Tahitians are circled. There's grooves going around the pearl, which also gives it an exquisite beauty. Next, we have the Baroque pearl. These are more distorted and again, very irregular. What I'm wearing here is considered a freshwater Baroque pearl. There's beauty to be seen in imperfection, and this is one of my favorite shapes to wear. Next, we'll talk about size. Pearls can be as small as two millimeter in size and can go up as high as 20 to 25 millimeter in size, but that's also very, very rare. Over here, we have a pearl that's five millimeter in size. And then this is as big as 15 to 17 millimeter in size. When pearls reach the eight to nine millimeter mark, which is this size, pearls really jump high up in price. Second important factor is that when a large amount of pearls of the same size are harvested, the cost will go down. Third is supply and demand. When there's a high demand for the same size pearls, the cost will definitely go up. And fourthly, another very important factor is that saltwater pearls are created in an oyster, and oysters only create one pearl at a time. And to be able to assemble an entire necklace of the same size, pearl, and shape is very, very rare and could take many, many years. Hence the reason why they're very valuable and expensive. Next is shine. Usually the deeper and the more lustrous a pearl is, the more valuable it is. When a pearl is created, what happens is that it becomes threatened by a parasite or foreign object that enters the shell. And by protecting itself, it secretes what's called mother of pearl and it'll just keep layering itself. And as it layers itself, it becomes more lustrous. So essentially, the longer a pearl remains in its shell, the more lustrous it'll be. For example, here I have freshwater pearls, which don't have such a high luster. I mean, often these pearls are examined under a specific light, but to the naked eye, you can tell that these don't have the highest luster. This is a mix of South Sea pearls and Tahitian. And as you can tell, it's just very, very vibrant. To be able to collect pearls of this luster together can take years. Next, we'll talk about the surface of the pearl. The fewer the flaws and blemishes on a pearl, normally they are considered more valuable. But again, there are pearls with great imperfections that are just as valuable and desirable. In essence, there is no perfection in nature. And again, these are created by nature and there is something to appreciate in all in all the pearls, whether they have blemishes or no blemishes. And here I can show you an example of a strand of pearls, and these are considered to have no blemishes at all. And then here we have a strand of Tahitian pearls, which do have blemishes and flaws. But again, there is beauty and imperfection, and I think it gives it a very exotic and natural feel. Lastly, we'll talk about the shade of the pearl. Pearls come in an array of all sorts of beautiful, natural colors. To start off with, Tahitians. They come in shades of blacks, browns, grays, greens. But the most desirable color Tahitian is what's known as the peacock color, and it possesses colors of the peacock feather. 
Here we have a Tahitian necklace with peacock colored pearls. And you can see there's hues of pinks, greens, purples, which is really exotic and different. Next, we have South Sea pearls. They come in shades of creams, golden colors, and grayish tones. Lastly, we have the freshwater pearls, as what I'm wearing here. They come in whites, creams, pinks, violets. Here we have a strand of freshwater pearls, and you can see there's different hues of pink, there's orangey colors, and ivory as well. And all of these pearls are all natural uh, occurring colors. Anything other than that would be considered dyed. So these are the five S's of pearls, and next time when you walk into a jewelry store to buy pearls, you know what five important S's to take into consideration.